Saram Idme. Yes, Saram Idme. And speaking of the life of Sarah, because here we find that Sarah, she passes on, she dies, and this Sarah, the wife of Abraham, she dies and she's buried in a place, a very important, very interesting place that is known as Mechpelah. Oh, oh, Shabbat Shalom, Sembet Salam, Sembet Salam. This is the fifth Sabbath, the fifth sabbatical of the year, the Rastafari Sabbath and sabbatical studies. And when the fifth portion, the fifth uh, parasha, or the kuffal. Now, we say kuffal, which is very interesting in this particular teaching, especially when we touch on um, uh, makpala, or makfala, mekfala, or darab kuffal, malet, which was the place where Sara, this is called... Um, Chaye Sara in the Hebraist, the Hebrew, and it's called the uh, Saram Idme. Yeah, Saram Idme. And speaking of the life of Sara, because here we find that Sara, she passes on, she dies, and this Sara, the wife of Abraham, she dies and she's buried in a place, a very important, very interesting place that is known as Mech. Pella. Now here's another very important connection to the ancient Gnosis coming out of Kemet. You understand the true origins coming out of the southern genesis of ancient Egypt, of Ethiopia, the Tob, the good land, Tobia. And all of this is now coming, becoming more and more full cycle as we're growing in these particular studies. And what we're going to do right here is do an overview of it and hopefully have an opportunity to touch on certain significant areas. But one very significant area is uh, Mechpelah. Mechpelah. That's the Hebrew H, uh, and the H4375 uh, word. And then also see the Schofield, or not the Schofield, but the Strong's Concordance, H4375 as well as the root word etymology, the H3717. So here again we see how the Hebraic, the true Hebraic uh, Targum, or Targum, the interpretation, when it's rightly, the word is rightly divided, shows and reflects the Ethiopic genesis or the Ethiopic origin and the root of the root of the half of the story that hasn't been told out of out of Ethiopia into Egypt and then the sun being called out of Egypt or the Cheruyan Zer or the chosen race or the Horus race which is the Ibrawian or the Hebrews, the Hebrews coming out and then Queen of Sheba, King Solomon we find the cycle basically repeating itself or the connectiveness of this. Anyway, we're going to do an overview at first but we found it very interesting um, in just preparing and going over the basic, the words. The First of all, the words and the names. As we said in the former um, teachings, that the names are very important. One um, thing that we've learned that we share with others is when you do the readings and you're studying any area of Scripture and you come across names, do due diligence to study these names and to look up these names, especially in the context of whether it's the whether it's Hebrew or whether it's in the say New Testament, the Greek, and if you have the opportunity and the wherewithal to check it out in the Royal Amharic as well as in the Ethiopic to really go to the root origin because the names helps us to understand the context and the perspective of the scripture. And based on the true, the true uh, background of the five books of Moses, Moses' first five books coming out of Egypt, therefore the Kamite mythos or the mythology or the mysteries, the wisdom school. You understand? Because Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts, upper and lower Egypts, or what's known as Egypt, and the upper was the headwaters of the Nile or the Abyssinian highlands, which was that ancient mound that rose up with the Atum, according to the ancient Egyptian 
according to the ancient Egyptian, what they call mythology or their 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 story, according to their witness, their origins came from the new and the great beyond, and that great beyond pointed to the Ethiopic uh, Genesis, and that's the mound, and that mound logically, geographically. You understand the mound reflected below, which represents a reflection from the above or the celestial, which is the allegory, that which is reflected on earth, is reflected in that particular area of the world that we know as the as the Abyssinian the Abyssinian or the Kabasa, the Kabasa highlands of Ethiopia. So um, Mekpela or Mekfela is very is a very very key word because if you have a copy of our um, sabbatical studies, yes, Saman Tawi Senbet Orit Nabab, we call it the we call it the the kufl. We we use the word kufl for the parasha or the portions. And when you get to the root Pela or Kefala, Mek Pela, Mek Kefala, you know you'll find that Kefala is Ethiopic, and that means portion as well. And here we find that Sara, the mother of Yishak, the wife of Abraham, that type, according to the, the, the mythos, she's buried in a place that's called the place of the two portions or the double portion or the cave of the double portions. And then when we make a logical connection to the Akhet and to the Mizan and the scales and the Mecca, studying from ancient Egypt, the Mecca, the double portions, Joe Macy had a pretty interesting word, I think, in the Book of Beginnings that we'll quote and put into, submit into evidence to really um, to back up what we're saying as well as to give another reference. You understand? So from each of the sources and resources is reflecting the same Ethiopic genesis of this particular portion. So the Orit uh, Zemuse or the Torah for the fifth Sabbath in this uh, cycle is from Genesis 23 and 1 to Genesis 25 and 18. And the next portion that we're going to do in this particular presentation is to go over the overview and then also point out some of the key significant names that we find. We've touched on Abraham. We've also touched on Sarah, on, on Hagar or Agar, on Yisahak, on the meaning of the names. So you'll find that in the Bible itself, when certain names are introduced, sometimes it gives us an idea of the for lack of a better word, the hieroglyphs, the hieroglyphs of the name, because the hieroglyphs, they use the the symbols, but the symbols had many different meanings. This is one reason why in the Shemitic and the Ethiopic and the Hebrew language, a word tends to have a lot of different meanings according to its context. But there was a natural genesis to it, and Gerald Macy has done and left us a wonderful testament to that African origin of both ancient Egypt as well as the true interpretation of the Bible and therefore Christianity coming out of Ethiopia, coming out of Kemet, out of Egypt, where the sun was called out of, but the sun had to go into Egypt, you understand, in order to receive that education and that preparation. So Egypt becomes a base for Yahweh Baruch Hu's, for his revelation. In other words, Egypt is that base. That's why Egypt is, all roads really lead to Egypt, not to so much Rome, but that's a whole different subject matter right there. So Mechpela is what we're going to begin off on after we give an overview of what is contained in this particular kufl or this particular kafala, and there's a double portion even within the Torah reading, because there's a reading, and then there's a study. And in that study, there must be the correct, rightly dividing the word. Therefore, there is the natural, as well as there's the supernatural, or there is the earthly, and the spiritual, as in Yeru Salem. The Salem is dual salam, dual two peace, the city of dual peace, as above the allegorical, the proverb, the parabolical, the the so-called mythological reflected below among men and people and humanity. 
So we're going to touch on that as we come forward. Once again, Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam, as we record this and present this week's sabbatical reading and study, known in the Hebrew as uh, Chaye Sara, and in the Metaf Kedus of Haila Kedemawi Haila Salase the first. His Imperial Majesty, the authorized Amharic Bible, is known as Yesaram Idme, or the the life is to say the life from the Hebrew, you know, saying, and in the Royal Amharic, it still says the life, but more in the lifetime. Speaking of the lifetime of Sarah, of Sarah, 